Hello and welcome to the first episode of the Steam Free to Play. It has just gone live on Steam about mm, an hour and a half ago, and I made a brand new account, Kanajashi Steam F2P, and we're going to be playing through from the start with absolutely no monies at all and no mechs at all. If I go into my select mech and I go owned, I have nothing. And we're going to be going through and showing exactly how to play this game free to play, without spending a single cent. And as I go through, I'll be explaining things such as how to do certain play styles, how to be better at the game, get more damage on your opponents and stuff like that. But to start off, I'm going to go through the tutorial. I myself don't need it, but if you complete the tutorial and the challenge within it, you can get a good chunk of C-bills. So I'm just going to go do that, and I'm going to cut or fast forward to when I'm done. But you should go and do this yourself, as it gives you some good information on how to move your mech, and how to uh, shoot opponents and stuff like that. Just the real good basics. But I'm going to cut until I get back with some of that extra money that you get from doing the tutorial. So, see you in a second. All right, we just completed the basic tutorial and we got a smattering of Seabills. That is awesome. That's a great start for our free to play. In game currency, the Seabill, you earn it by doing challenges, getting ranks in community warfare, or um, doing actions in game against your opponents in quick matches. Connect back here. We'll see how many exactly we got from that. 5 million sea bills. That is actually enough to purchase a mech if we wanted. But, we would only be able to purchase us a small mech. So we're going to wait. And we're going to save up our sea bills. But first thing I want to talk about, if I just uh, select a mech, let's go with the trial ones here. Let's find a good mech to experiment with. Let's go with this Stormcrow Prime. This is a very nice build. I like this one. We'll go into the testing grounds, and I like doing things. Oh, let's go River City. I'm just going to show you some settings that you may want to take into consideration before you start playing the game. I do have a settings tutorial if you want this more succinctly. If not, you can just skip forward to the gameplay coming up later. All right, to start off, we go into our settings here down in the bottom left, and in the tutorial area, we have arm lock and throttle decay on. So if I just turn those on, I'll talk about them again. Arm lock, as we can see with our crosshairs, we have ones that are, our weapons are attached to our arms and weapons who are attached to our torsos. If we look in the bottom right here, we can see our weapon loadout and we can see the circle has two medium pulse and the cross has three medium pulse. The cross means torso weapons, and the circle means arm weapons. So, if we have arm lock on, it forces our arms to stay with our torso. And this is better for people who are coming from simpler shooters, where there only is one crosshair you have to worry about, and they're not as adept at managing a dual crosshair system. Now, I can hold left shift by default, and I can manually unlock these crosshairs and now you can see that the arm crosshair is leading the torso crosshair and I can go higher with my arm crosshair I can go all the way up there compared to if I let go of that I can only go as far as my torso so there are some benefits of having this unlocked because you can shoot things that are quite 
high above you in case you're shooting opponent that's say up on a building um, and also it's better for if you're trying to track a target really quickly across like say there's a light mech and he's running by arm weapons are more accurate in that sense so you can disable this by turning off arm lock and then it acts just like I'm holding down shift so this is how I prefer to play the next one is throttle decay Throttle decay, it's optional. I, it all depends on your preferences. If I press W, you're going to see my throttle be set up to maximum. And I'm going to slowly start walking forward until I reach my maximum speed. If I let go, like right now, my throttle is going to be set back to zero. And I'm going to come back to zero momentum. And I can tap that to keep myself going if I want to. But I have to hold down the button in order to keep myself walking forward. As soon as I let go, I stop. Again, this is more akin to other shooters where you, ha whenever you're moving forward, you have to press W. But there is also another option. You can turn off throttle decay. What this will do is when you press forward, instead of immediately setting it to 100% and then when you let go, setting it to zero, when you press W, it'll set it a little bit, a little bit. But then when I let go, I'm not touching the keyboard right now, my mech is gonna continue to walk forward, even without any interactions. You can do either one, it all depends on your preferences. I've gotten used to not having um, throttle decay on. I'm used to being able to set something and then be able to look over on the other way and then shoot, 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 and use my keys for weapons or activating consumables or such like that. So I'm just used to playing like this and that's how I'm going to do it. Cockpit glass is your choice. It's this little bit of green, little bit of, you can see the very, very far right there. Uh, there's that sort of little filter between the, your, your cockpit and the game world. And that's just to get to the semblance that you're in this transparent armor shell of a cockpit. You can turn it off if it affects your visibility, but it's it, it's just kind of like the tinting on your windshield of your car. It's not terribly in the way. It just gives it that little bit of an effect. Wherever you're shooting out forward, it's going to be most likely out of the way. So you can just leave that on if you want to. Uh, directional arrow is this arrow right here, which shows which way my feet are directing. So I would advise new people, give it a try. It's a really great way to get to used to how a mech walks, because it's just like a tank, as they explain in the tutorial. But I'm used to it, so I don't need my directional arrow on. I have sort of a play this game so much, I have a sixth sense of which way my legs are facing. I don't need this silly arrow, I know exactly where I'm going. The next one is these cockpit monitors. So if you look here, we have these monitors, and they're just really just sort of GIFs. They just repeat through, it just gives it a little bit of flavor. But this one right here, in the corner, is actually a kill counter. So if I pop over here, Target, and I just shoot the heck out of this commando, Target and destroyed. drop him, we can now see that there's one kill there. So that'll keep track of your kills. So it's kind of nice. You can have your, your amazing game, and then you can just look over there and be like, well, I got in five kills or something like that. You can turn those off through here, if you wish, and then they'll just turn black. But I like them because I think they're cool. So I'll turn them back on. Excellent. Next thing is first person FOV, and this is your field of view. Default is 60. However, I quite recommend that you increase this field of view. So if I set up a situation where, say, there's that rock there on my right, and I'm going to just set the camera so that I can't see or pass that rock on the right. I can see the rock, but I can't see past it. If I go into the settings here and I take my FOV from 60 to, say, 80, which I'd recommend somewhere between 70 and 90, depending on your preferences, it pulls the camera back and gives you more field of view. Now I can see past the rock on the right. So if there is an opponent coming from there, 
if I had a higher FOV, I'd be able to see them coming and react to them, where if I had a lower FOV, I'd have to move my head to look at them. You don't want to set it too high, uh, because if you go way up there, you get this massive sort of fish-eyeing effect, and this is no fun. So I like to set it around 80, and that's where I found it pretty comfortable. Next thing is sensitivity. If we look here, when I'm trying to, say, aim at a specific thing, uh, it can be a little jumpy with the, the, the aimer. You can see it's sort of bouncing around. I'm not used to this. It is a good idea to lower your sensitivity down a fair amount. So I'm going to go into the settings here and lower it down to somewhere between, say, 0.2 and 0.3. And what that'll do is it'll make it way easier for you to be able to sort of track targets as you're running by them at distance. So you're running by, say, I want to aim at that tree, and I'm zooming in, and I want to aim right at that tree, and I'm going to try to keep on that tree as best I can. The better you're able to maintain that good aim, the more damage you'll put on a single enemy component, and the faster you'll kill them. So good idea to lower your sensitivity. Although, experiment with it to find something that's comfortable for you. And last thing is I'm just going to enable all chat, and that allows me to see what the opponents are chatting in the all chat. So not what they're chatting to their team, but what they're chatting to everyone. So it's just the public chat. Go into the auto here. No real changes required. This is just the default settings. It's highly recommended that you set up your voiceover internet protocol system and I will set these to my playback device default and set this to my Yeti microphone that I'm using for this. Voiceover is an extremely important part of this game. You need to be able to communicate with your allies and inform them of enemies positions and flanks and all that kind of stuff. Next thing would be the video settings. I am just running things on very high. I do have a video settings tutorial which goes into where things change in terms of how high you can set stuff. I would personally suggest putting, say, stuff like particles and maybe post-processing down on low. Shading can stay high. Shadows can go to medium. Uh, those are sort of the ones that have big effects on how the game looks. So if I save this, well, not how the game looks, the games will st the game will still look good, at least in my opinion, but it's just going to run a little bit smoother. You definitely want to tweak these settings based on your rig. If you have a monster rig, set everything on very high. But if you have an okay rig, try to turn down some things until you get a decent frame rate because being able to have that nice smooth frame rate is more important than having the game look good. The only things that I would say you want to leave on very high is environment and object detail and shadows on medium. Those are basically the only things because object detail affects how far things will render from you. So the detail of a building, it's physical model and that kind of stuff and the environments does that exact same things but for the terrain so if you lower those down you may have a situation where you're shooting at a mech but because you have your things on low and you're far away there's say a situation where this is a bit of extreme but you can see this dip here with the two tips in between it could be that if the settings were on low and you were really far away it wouldn't render this dip and so it would just be flat across there maybe maybe making you think oh I don't have a shot when you could just shoot into the terrain and it's not really there it's it's not that extreme but there are some very slight terrain changes and hitbox changes at least from the visual that can be lost if you set those on low so I'd just recommend at least those settings, the object detail and the environment on very high. When it comes to keyboards, you can set these to however you want, but a couple sort of 
tricks that I do, instead of throttle up and throttle down being W and S, I find that it doesn't, it can take us a while to get all the way up to full speed. I'm going to press W and one, two, three. I have to hold W for three whole seconds. That's so last week when I can go into here and go into my keyboard and instead, instead of throttle up and throttle down, go down to throttle step up, step throttle up and step throttle down and remap these to my W and my S. And what this will do is it'll make it so that I only have to hold this down for a second. You're going to see my throttle there just rock it up and I'm up at full speed already. This is more important when it comes to light mechs that accelerate extremely quickly. They can actually do that acceleration. There's some mechs in the game that accelerate so quickly that they actually outstrip your ability to raise your throttle with the normal holding of W. So by doing its throttle step up, it steps it 10% at a time and gets to max speed very quickly. Some other things you can do is just personal preferences. I like to set, where is it? Set max zoom level to F, just for myself. I, I've gotten used to pressing F to zoom. And certain things such as cool shot, the different consumables, I set this to C. Artillery strike, I set to my mouse button and launch UAV, another mouse button. And I'm just doing those because I'm just doing these because it's it's what I'm used to. And you want to set these keyboard settings up to ones that you can do without moving your hands, without moving your hands off WASD or all of the other um, buttons, sort of thing. So I've got this all set up. Uh, controller uh, controllers work okay with the game, but this is where you would set them up. I personally have never done it. We can save our settings, and we can go and get into our first match. So just want to make sure. Ugh. Just like my live account. Oh, this feels good. All right. And we'll probably take this mech into the first match because it is a very strong mech. All right, so we have our choices here. We go select mech. We have the four weight classes, light, medium, heavy and assault and they're diff basically just weight brackets 20 to 35 40 to 55 60 to 75 and 80 to 100 tons and they're all every mech in this game can do well can win it's not like say world of tanks where there are tiers like you have a tier 3 tank and it's obviously worse than a tier 5 tank most of the mechs in the game are pretty equal in terms. Any mech can kill any mech as long as it's playing to its situation, playing to its strength. For mechs that, say, are a little bit weaker, like if there's absolutely nothing different about them except for their base stats, the Stormcrow here would be better than this Hunchback. But as you can see here with this Hunchback, there are quirks. These are little boosts that basically bring it up to par with the mechs that are deemed more powerful. So that's how they've made everything equal. Instead of saying Hunchback would be a tier one and the Stormcrow would be a tier whatever, you instead have these quirks to bring everything equal. So let us uh, grab this Stormcrow. It is a good trial mech. And let's hit the quick play button. And we can select our regions and we can see our different weights times for the not wait times but our pings to the different regions so north american is 87 milliseconds and i want to go on that one so i'm just going to unselect european and oceanic and just play on north american servers and we can see the matchmaking status lights are at 10 percent mediums are at 24 heavies at 45 and assaults at 21 that means if we want to get a mech get a match faster it's actually better for us to play a light mech but mediums are at 25 and that's that's fine and we'll, we'll get a match pretty quickly with this mech so i'll see you when i'm in game oh wow i guess i don't need to cut that at all that was instantaneous match let's go this is the voting thing so you you click on a map that you'd like to see and it 
applies your vote towards that map. I'm going to go Assaults. Eh, sure, we'll go Forest Colony. That's a fun map. If you don't get your choice, if you vote for something and you don't get the map or game mode that you want, you get a multiplier. That means your vote will basically be worth more next time you vote. So if I had missed that on, say, just the map, I had chosen the, uh, whatever the other one was that I was clicking on, I think River City, um, my map choice, because we went with Forest Colony, would have been set to times two. But my assault choice, the game mode, would have won and would have stayed at plus one, just stayed at times one. Then every time you miss, you add a multiplier and every time you win, you reset back to one. So it's that way you can, you know, save up and do fun things with it. All right, we're on our first match. Good luck, have fun. And we see we have a PGI. We have a, a developer of the game in the match with us in the Shadowhawk, which is a 55 ton inner sphere uh, medium. I will be explaining all these, all this lingo eventually, if you just stick around and watch. But dropping here in three seconds. The goal of an assault match is twofold. We either have the opponent's base that we can capture, or we can just beat up the opponents and kill them all. I, I tend to app towards the second one, because I like shooting mechs, and you get some good rewards for shooting people. Um, that is where the majority of your uh, C-Bill rewards will come from, is helping your opponents and killing your al uh, helping your opponents killing your allies. That's backwards. Helping your allies and killing your opponents. My god. I was so excited. I woke up way earlier than I thought I was going to today. I'm just like, what oh, steam? Uh, I've been too invested in this game for the last few years. But anyway, let us move forward. Best thing to do when you first launch into a map, I just press B to open my um, battle grid, is we're going to regroup with our allies. And we're probably going to be regrouping around our base here in H10. And just basing from there, and then going off and trying to find the opponents. You can see we have a light mech of our own over there, a Jenner. Another Stormcrow. Oh, I, I set that wrong. That should be instead of set keyboard, it should be toggle. Toggle max zoom level. That's the one I wanted. Otherwise, it'll just set me a max zoom and I can't get out of it. There. Whoop, whoop, whoop. There. Every time I press F, it does that. Excellent. Looks like our allies are moving right on this map. And here are our allies. There's, there's the PGI developer. That's one of the guys who made the game. There's the an assault mech, a king crab, a hundred tons of big guns. It's amazing. Can one shot a few things. Ooh. Our light has run to the enemy base and is pressuring the capture there. Hopefully he doesn't get caught out. He's a little away from the group, but we shall... Ooh, oh god, he's down to... Oh, he... Oh god, he's down to 87, 86, 85... Oh, he's probably dead. Yeah, he got caught by the enemy team. You do not want to press that far alone. And especially if you're only in a light mech, you don't have much armor and it's hard to survive. But he is down. I'm going to have to carry extra hard for the team. Oh, there's an enemy. Take a shot at him. Incoming missiles. We're going to take cover behind terrain. Missiles don't hit us. Missiles are no problemo. But we're going to move with the team. We are down at tier 5, which means we are at the most 
basic of max well a boat starting players everyone starts down in tier five my main account has gotten to tier two although that has just been steadily increasing since they have put in the tiers and it would basically be eventual i'll get to tier one but we shall see what i can do here in this first match so many alarms oh my god got my first hit there on the wolfhound i'm just pulling back into cover just keeping myself alive put shot there into the timber wolf i'm gonna back down you can see my heat on the right has been increasing as i fire my weapons i don't want to overheat because that leaves me vulnerable but step out put a shot into the timber wolf he is cord ct you can see his status in the top right Target and destroyed. he's down excellent we got our medium assist out of that Right. See, I have absolutely no problem with firing, with fighting LRMs, because they pose me no threat. Because I know how to deal with them. That's what is that hero? The Loup de Guerre is the trebuchet hero, a 50-ton IS medium. Oh, there's a opponent on our left. We're gonna rebase here. I'm gonna put in a shot there. He's shooting at us, so we're twisting our torso back and forth. We're trying to spread damage across all of our sections here. Try to stay alive far as, as long as possible. Oh, lots of enemies. We're going to pull further around the left here. Try to get another position. I'm going to switch to heat vision. It allows you to see mechs a little bit better in these low visibility uh, conditions. Angling missiles. I'm going to twist. I'm going to get back into cover. Break line of sight, missiles hit terrain. Warning, incoming missile. I've taken some damage. My team's moving to the right, so I'm not going to be left behind by them. I'm going to move with them. Sometimes you can lead the team, sometimes you just have to adapt to what they do. And I wish I was in a bit heavier of a mech so that I would be able to lead some of these pushes. That's probably what I'll have to do for the next battle. I am thirsty to go acquired. hunt down Warning, a missile, missile boat here. Incoming missiles behind terrain. It's a big old tree will protect me. Warning, and go ahead and fire missiles at me all day long. You cannot get me behind my tree. New target acquired. This is not looking terribly wonderful. Ooh, get behind the tree again. We'll just do good trades with our opponents acquired. here. Warning, nope, too missile. long. Too far away. Incoming missiles. Nope. Alright, nothing happening. Well, this position is a bit too far away from my liking. We can push up now. And there is that atlas over here that had LRMs that I want to take care of. Assault mechs with LRMs are yeah, typically frowned upon by the community because it's viewed they're viewed as ineffectual. You should be at the front lines with all your armor, kicking butt, taking names. Maybe not in that order. Acquired. But we are losing our guys here. I'm going to have to get a couple kills here to New even this out. Acquired. The Ebon Jaguar, I'm going to focus on taking his side torso off because it's damaged. Got it. Okay. That took away the majority of his weapons, which is a good thing for us. He's much less of a threat. This Atlas is Lurms. Okay, I'm going to charge at him, because if I get within two, 180 meters, his LRMs are useless against us, and we pick up our first kill. Continuing along to this Ebon Jaguar, around our ally, put in a good shot, he's down. Spin around, take out the opponent, light mech standing still, put an extremely good hit on him, taking out a lot of his health. I am crit, but that wolf found is two. Opponents are all coming around the corner. My ally's in my way. Okay, my ally was blocking me and that's always no fun. Another good hit onto that wolfhound. Looks like our first win, well, our win, our first game here will be a loss. Uh, and I'm getting caught up. But that is alright. 
That happens. Trying to spread damage as long as I can, but I get taken out. So let's see what we got for our stats. We did 586 damage, a kill, and two assists. I need to get into a little bit bigger of a mech to be able to uh, carry that match a bit more. We got 112,000 C bills and some experience, and that skill rate means we're not going to change in our ranking yet. Let's see how we did comparatively to our team. We had the ba bananas in pajamas did quite well, 755. So we are number two on our team. Excellent. And we exit the match, and we're going to get our first cadet bonus. And this is a bonus given for your first 25 games. And it's a nice, I think it's like 12 something, 15 million Seavils. And it's a really great starting boost to new players. It does go away eventually, but allows you to get a couple mechs. So connect, 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 and we'll see how many Seavils we have now. Five point nine million. All right. Next match. I need something heavier. I need something with a little bit more shoot in it and do a little bit more damage. I think I'm gonna take the. Yeah. Do I want to take the dire wolf. Oh, it's so slow. I am going to take. Oh, there's that king crab. I'm gonna take the timber wolf. Is it extremely well? Um. Well, not well balanced. This thing is strong. This is a one of the more powerful uh, heavy mechs in the game at 75 tons. Quick play. <laughs> 